Hello and welcome to my video where I'm going to show you how to knit Christmas baubles using flat knitting. I'll be making this bauble from Stylecraft Special Chunky Acrylic Yarn and I'll be using 6mm straight needles as that's the size that's recommended on the yarn label. In terms of the amount of yarn you're going to need it shouldn't be more than about 20 grams so this project is great for using up small amounts of yarn. The finished bauble is about 8 cm or 3 inches high and about 26 cm or 10 inches in circumference. Note that if you want to make your bauble a bit smaller or you want your knitting to be more dense than mine then feel free to go down a couple of needle sizes. I would recommend this especially if you're using a dark coloured yarn because then less of the white filling will show through. In this video I'll be showing you how to knit the bauble flat then how to apply a design using duplicate stitch and then how to seam up the bauble using mattress stitch. Ok so the first thing you need to do is cast on 6 stitches. I'm using the long tail cast on but you could use your favourite method. Then for row 1 which represents the wrong side of the knitting we're just going to purl across the row. Note that every wrong side row in this pattern is going to be exactly the same, it's just going to be a purl row. Then for row 2 which represents the right side of the knitting we're going to be doing a KFB increase for every stitch. KFB stands for knit in the front and the back and it's a single increase. You begin by doing most of the steps of a normal knit stitch except you don't slip the stitch off the needle. Instead you swing the needle around to the back and then you knit into the back of the same loop. So take your right hand needle down into the back of that stitch and do all of the steps of a knit stitch. As you can see you now have two stitches on the right hand needle rather than one. And you just repeat this KFB increase all across the row. So do most of the steps of a knit stitch except don't slip the stitch off the needle. Take your needle to the back and then knit into the back of the same stitch. Knit into the front of the stitch and then into the back and so on. At the end of this row you should have 12 stitches. Then row 3 is just a regular wrong side row so that's just purl stitches all the way across. And then for row 4 we repeat KFB and then knit 1. So that's a KFB and then a knit stitch. KFB and knit 1 and so on. At the end of this row the number of stitches on your needle should be 18. Then row 5 is a pill row. And for row 6 you need to repeat KFB and knit 2. So that's knit front and back and knit 2 stitches. KFB and knit 2 and so on. At the end of this row you should have 24 stitches. Row 7 is just the purl row. And then for row 8 you need to repeat KFB then knit 3. So that's knit front and back. And knit 3 stitches. KFB. and knit 3 and so on.
you should now have 30 stitches. Then rows 9 to 19 are just stockinette stitch, starting with a purl row. So row 9 is a purl row, row 10 is a knit row, row 11 is a purl row, row 12 is a knit row and so on. So throughout this section we're just maintaining that 30 stitch width. Then for row 20 we're going to repeat K2 tog and then knit 3 over and over. K2 tog is a single decrease where you knit 2 stitches together. It's very simple, you just need to take your right hand needle up through two stitches rather than one and do all the steps of a normal knit stitch. As you can see this reduces two stitches down to one. And then just knit three stitches. And you just repeat that. So do a K2 tog. And knit 3, K2 tog and knit 3 and so on. At the end of this row you should have 24 stitches. Row 21 is a purl row. And then for row 22, you need to repeat K2 tog and K2. So knit two together. And knit two. K2 tog. And knit two. And so on. At the end of this row, you should have 18 stitches. Then row 23 is a purl row. And for row 24 you need to repeat knit 2 together and knit 1. So that's knit 2 together and knit 1. Knit 2 together and knit 1. And so on across the row. You should then only have 12 stitches left. Row 25 is a purl row. And then for row 26, you just do K2 togs across the row. So that's knit two together. And again. And again, and so on. You should then only have six stitches left on your needle. And that's it, that's the knitting section complete. Now you need to cut off the excess yarn to leave you with enough of a yarn tail to seam up your bauble and also to make a hanging loop. Feed this yarn tail into your yarn needle and then feed the needle through the remaining stitches. What I'm going to do now is add a snowflake pattern to the centre of this knitting using duplicate stitch. This of course is an optional extra step. As you can see I've planned out a couple of snowflake designs and feel free to use either. I've drawn a 13 by 13 stitch grid because that's the number of stitches I have available to use. To do this you're going to need a contrasting yarn that's at least as thick as the yarn in your knitting, or maybe a little thicker. Cut a length of this yarn and feed it into a yarn needle. If it'll help you to mark out some of the stitches, feel free to do so using a disappearing fabric pen or stitch markers. As you can see, I've marked out the central stitch. 
If you take a closer look at your knitting, you'll see that stockinette stitch is made up of columns of V-shaped stitches. To make a duplicate stitch, you're basically just duplicating one of these V-shapes. So feed the yarn into your yarn needle and come up through the point of the V-shape you want to replicate, like so. Make sure you leave a yarn tail at the back to weave in later. Then move horizontally underneath the V-shaped stitch above this one. Then go back down through the point of the V-shape you're duplicating. And that's one duplicate stitch completed. Feel free to adjust the tension if you've made this stitch too loose or too tight. And you just repeat this exactly the same for every stitch you want to duplicate. So come up through the point of the V-shape. Go underneath the V-shape stitch above it horizontally. And then back down through the point. And I just repeat this over and over until my design is complete. Note that when doing duplicate stitch, it's a little bit easier to move from bottom to top within the blocks of colour. However, the only difference when moving downwards is that you also need to go underneath the duplicate stitch, like so. And here you can see the duplicate stitch design completed. Weaving in the yarn tails is the last step. And then the final step is to seam up this bauble using the mattress stitch. A good idea before you begin is to use stitch markers to keep the edges lined up. In order to do this, we're going to go under the horizontal strands one stitch from the edge, which you can see here. All you need to do is go under the first horizontal strand, then go over to the other side and go under another horizontal strand Then to the other side and go under the next strand, over to the other side and go under the next strand and so on. I have a separate video about the mattress stitch if you need more help. Once you've done this for about an inch or so, you can then pull on the yarn parallel to the seam to tighten up the stitches. And we just carry on like that all the way across. Before you complete this seam, make sure you stop and add stuffing to the bauble.
And then at the end, you can just create a hanging loop by tying a couple of knots like I've done. Or if you want the bauble to be the other way up, you can take the yarn through the center of the bauble to the other side and then create a loop there. Just make sure you weave any yarn tails back into the bauble. And that's it, that's the bauble completed. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.